Last episode, we went from zeros to heroes in the Premier League, storming to the top of the table, but our Champions League struggles continue, and if we don't win today, we'll go crashing out of Europe's biggest cup competition. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe, and let's get into today's episode. A 1-0 win away from home against West Bromwich Albion in the final game of the last episode has helped extend our unbeaten run and take us to a point above Manchester City, right up to the top of the Premier League table for the first time this season. But with the single solitary goal of this game coming from the main man Mukoku. This season he is finally starting to step out of the shadow of Brian Brobby and really establish himself as our number one striker this season and he is a firm reason why we sit so high in the Premier League table. And whilst in spite of Brian Brobby scoring a goal every other game, five in ten Premier League appearances, he is being overshadowed by his German strike partner Yusuf Mukoku. But for me the biggest improvement across the team is seeing the likes of Matt O'Reilly, the likes of Jota, Johan Bakayoko and even new signing Emil Smith-Rowe all chipping in with goals to their name and it is a key component as to why we are doing so well in the Premier League this season. But the same cannot be said of our fate in the Champions League. Four games played and just one win coming so far in the competition and that was only away from home against the weakest team in FC Copenhagen who sit bottom of the table. We've still got two games to play to try and resurrect our form, one of them being a home game against that team we've beaten Copenhagen but the huge one is going to be the decider away from home against our German rivals Bayern Leverkusen. The board have got incredibly high hopes for us this season and they are expecting us to reach the final of the Champions League. And to be honest, bearing in mind the fairly favourable draw that we seem to get at the beginning of the competition, I can't quite put my finger on why we aren't performing particularly well. Now as you can see across the course of this season in particular, I have jumped between several different formations. The latest one of course being this 3-5-2, which does of course allow me to utilise the likes of Mukoku and Brian Brobby partnering each other up front. But with me only having three defenders at the back and even gaping holes at the right and left back positions with no one covering them. Whilst it seems to be working pretty well in the Premier League, perhaps it's a system that just isn't suited to playing European football. Before we dip our toes into the European scene though, it is time to go back to Premier League football as we're going to be facing off against Tottenham Hotspur at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And speaking of the ever-changing formation and tactics this season, of course with Spurs being a team that is going to be tough to beat away from home, I have returned to this more balanced 4-3-3. Pickford starts in goal, Teresiano Gay, Brantwaite and Hato at the back, Anana, Damsgaard and Riley in midfield, Bakayoko, Emil Smith-Rowe and Mukoku get the start up front. Of course this is a Spurs team vying for a Champions League place this season in fifth place but they did cause me some grief last year and I've got to try and see if I can make sure that we get the three points here today to try and continue our unbeaten run so far. Peretti for Spurs, it's been a fairly tame and uh, lacklustre affair here inside the opening 15 minutes but Madison is going to look to try and see if he can make a change to that as Pedro Porro comes across while well challenged by Hato, Brantwaite can't get away from the challenge of Madison though, Spurs win the ball back high up the field, now Kuliszewski has it, goes round the corner into Moretti, into the penalty area, Brantwaite tries to come across to put in a decent challenge, does manage to get ahead of Pedro Porro, and now he can try and release a ball down to Emil Smith-Rowe, who of course, a former Arsenal man, will be absolutely desperate to do a job here on Spurs, as Emil Smith-Rowe plays a lovely ball into Damsgaard, Damsgaard down the line into Makoku. Makoku gets there ahead of Vicario, but the Italian just about does enough to clear his lines, Damsgaard has it though, back into Anana, Anana with a brilliant strike and Vicario stretches again manages to get his hand on it and that man keeping Spurs in the game here inside the opening 25 minutes as we have a corner that Emil Smith-Rowe is going to take, I'm going to try and throw it into the box, into the penalty area is Hato and once again it's the Italian Vicario with a strong hand, Emil Smith-Rowe with our second corner inside a couple of minutes and once again I'm going to go for the tried and trusted tactic of trying to put it into the penalty spot and yet again Vicario, the fourth time in about five minutes it's my word, this man is keeping the North London Giants in this game. Emil Smith-Rowe fires it in this time with a bit more vigour and a bit more verve. But he doesn't get it right and Spurs clear their lines into Beto. Beto flies past Mark Gay like he's not even there. Jung min Son on the left-hand side checks back inside. The uh, South Korean, the Spurs captain, is going to try and see if he can spark some sort of life into this Spurs attack. Lovely ball into Moretti. Moretti strikes. This time it's Jordan Pickford down our end that comes to our rescue. It will be that man Madison to take the resulting corner. Fires it in. Headed away though by an Anana only out as far as the former Everton man Beto who on the volley lashes that way wide. Brantwaite yet again to bring it out and finds Hato nicely and 
Ato now to try and bring this one forward. And Millsmith Rowe with the dummy. And now the Dutchman can just storm past the Spurs defence into the penalty area. My word, that would have been a sensational goal. But Vicario is an absolute man mountain between the sticks here today. Beto for Spurs now. Is he going to try and see if he can feed a ball into Human Son? He keeps going though, unopposed. No one putting in a challenge. Eventually, Mark Gay does manage to uh, intercept the ball well. And he finds Millsmith Rowe, who finds Makoku, who goes down the line into Terraciano. Can Terraciano now try and bring this one forward? He does. Manages to go past the left back. Can he try and bring it infield? Manages to find Bakayoko. Bakayoko into Makoku. And Makoku, I believe, at the sixth time of asking, finally manages to get past Vicario and give us a lead right on the stroke of our time. Well, what a perfect time to score and what a perfect goal. Lovely build-up play. We cut through the Spurs defence. Vicario shot out like lightning but just couldn't get there in time. It's hard luck on the Italian who's been absolutely fabulous in the first half. But we do not care one bit. Neither does that man, Makoku. He continues his fine form. 1-0. Here we go then. The start of the second half. A big 45 minutes up ahead of us. If we can keep this 1-0 lead, we will take home a much needed three points to continue our fabulous run in the Premier League. Spurs have it though, into Beto, Beto to strike and Beto comes back with a vengeance to get revenge on his former club. He picked the ball up after a loose pass from my defenders and he had time and space to pick his spot and just like that inside the opening five minutes of this half. Spurs right back on level terms, one all. Dams guards come short to try and get involved. He's been pretty quiet so far in this game. But he's going to try and see if he can make amends to that in the second half. O'Reilly, lovely piece of play there. Releases back Yoko, who tried to release Mukoku, but just crowded out by the Spurs defence. Addison now for Spurs. The North London club have their tails up here. And where on earth is my midfield? Madison just allowed to ghost through the centre. And Hume Son just goes past Terraciano like he's not even there. And now storms down this left-hand side. Mark A comes across. Lovely skill from the South Korean. Kirk is the left-back now, has it. Looking to try and make his way into the box. But Anana, an ever-present in my midfield across this entire career rear mode yet again in the right place at the right time and he releases Damsgaard and now Damsgaard can try and streak down this right hand side plays a ball into Mukoku Mukoku onto his left Mukoku looking for an option of Bakayoku who takes it on and strikes with his right but in the end it's another big save from Vicario and it will be another Everton corner Bakayoko to throw it in looking for the head of Mukoku yet again those two looking to combine but this time it's beaten away only out as far as a Millsmith row Riley to take on the shot this time it was blasted against the Spurs defence. Bakayoko will get another opportunity to throw it in. It will be another corner. And yet again, it's going to be another one that I'm going to throw into the box here. Looking for the substitute head of Alex Scott. And once again, Vicario is equal to it. That man has been unbelievable inside the Spurs goal this game. He has kept us out numerous times. Perhaps it could be about 7 or 8-1 in this game. Thrown back into Alex Scott. This time it's headed away. Only out as far as O'Reilly. He'll nod it down. Back into the path of Bakayoko to throw it back in. This time looking for the back post. But it's Kirk here's the left back who heads it away. And Beto, the goal scorer, brings it out into the path of Madison. Who will try and bring it forward here for Spurs. Releases Greenwood now. Who plays it into Pedro Porro. And he now goes past Brant when he's got the pace. But cuts back inside Hato trying to cover off. But in the end just did enough. The Branthwaite was able to put a challenge in and now Brian Brobby on as a substitute. Can I try and release a ball down the channel into that man, Alex Scott? He's going to try and turn it around the corner into a Millsmith throw. Into Bakayoko on his left, who just put it wide. It was a golden opportunity and he just got it all wrong. Well, that was a big, big opportunity that went begging there. And potentially that might come back to bite us if we are not able to secure the three points in the last few minutes of this game. But it is that man, Bakayoko, who will get a second opportunity. Oh my word, he's done it again. He's put it wide when it was easier to score. Let's check out the replay on his right. Oh, he got it all wrong. The big man, Vicario, doing enough to put him off. And I am disgusted. It still remains one all. Well, it turns out that was the last opportunity of the game. And as you can see from the rest of my players, they cannot quite believe that we've dropped two points here today. Full time here, it finishes Spurs 1, Everton 1. Oh, as you can see, it's a really tough one to take. And missed opportunities certainly cost us the win against Spurs. And not only has it cost us our position on top spot, it has dropped us all the way down to fourth place. And now we have been leapfrogged by Spurs. And somehow we sit four points behind Manchester City. What on earth is going on? Every Everything seems to be moving in the right direction, but it just goes to show how tough it is going to be this season to be successful in the Premier League. But with this man, Johan Bakayoko, not firing in all cylinders, it's going to make things even more difficult. He's my highest rated player at 88, and I really would expect better from the 23-year-old Belgian. And whilst, yes, he does have three goals and five assists to his name so far, perhaps if he doesn't start to find his shooting boots more often, the 
24-year-old Brazilian Jan Kuto is ready to step in and see if he can test the waters for a starting place in my starting 11. Speaking of needing to make improvements though, back we go to the Champions League. Two games remaining and it must be two wins if we want to try and seal our position in the knockout rounds. And fortunately enough, we get the job done in the first of two Champions League games remaining. A 3-1 win at home against FC Copenhagen. Leapfrogs us above Bayern Leverkusen into that second place spot and it now means with our last game being against the German Giants, our Champions League fate finally rests in our hands. And after a hard-fought comeback victory in the second half away from home at Old Trafford against Manchester United, it seems like things are back on track in the Premier League as well. And with 14 games played and with us managing to get back up into second place, now just one point behind Manchester City at the top, it is now time for a clash off the English two top teams as Manchester City come to Goodison Park in front of the Evertonians as we have our wonderful opportunity to try and assert our dominance here in the Premier League title race. And I'm only going to make one change from the team that drew against Tottenham in our very first played game. And that is that Emil Smith-Rowe comes in to play behind the striker of Mukoku. And Jota comes in on the left-hand side with Damsgaard being the man who drops to the bench. And it's going to be given to Bruyne to bring it forward for Manchester City. Both teams here, I'm sure, will be absolutely desperate for a win. It will do wonders for both of their Premier League aspirations this season. As now Manchester City look like the team in the ascendancy in the opening five minutes here as Rodrigo tries to come across. But Anana, of course, and ever present with a wonderful challenge and now O'Reilly can bring this one out of defence here and I can try and see if I can release a ball all the way out to Maki, uh, sorry Mukoku down the left hand side, Jota cuts it back in, Emil Smith throws to Bakayoko this man just does not have his shooting boots on in this episode, what on earth is he doing? Well he's had chance after chance after chance in these played games and he just cannot seem to find the back of the net what on earth is going wrong for the young Belgian? Harlan tussling for it. O'Reilly manages to win it though and Emil Smith-Rowe picks it up in a really good position and feeds in Mukoku. Mukoku tried to play around the corner got the pass all wrong and that is not what you want to do against such high level opposition as Rodri now will try and bring it forward chased down by Onana now it's Matias Nunez though to bring it through my midfielder Riley chasing him down lovely ball into Rodrigo Rodrigo into De Bruyne and De Bruyne lashes it home with his left foot past Jordan Pickford to give Manchester City a 1-0 lead here inside the opening 18 minutes. Well, it all started from a sloppy piece of play from Rukoku, but we cannot afford to allow Manchester City to just cut through our defence so easily. Jordan Pickford, wrong-footed. Kevin De Bruyne, absolutely straight down the pipe. Pep Guardiola celebrates 1-0. Well, frustrations and groans all round here at Goodison Park. A really, really disappointing way for us to concede early on here, but we've just got to make sure to keep our heads up and make sure we do not lose the faith just as Branthwaite ends up losing the ball. And now Rodrigo has it, tries to play it in to Haaland. But Mark Gay read that one brilliantly. And we just about get away with one there. Emil Smith-Rowe tried to feed it into Matt O'Reilly. But he loses it in a dangerous position. And Manchester City yet again capitalising on just a lack of concentration in the heart of my midfield. Haaland back into Kevin De Bruyne, the goal scorer. Haaland has it. But Branthwaite this time comes across and makes a challenge. And now Jota can try and play this one into the channel. Tried to find the run of Makoku. Doesn't manage to, but does manage to win the ball back and now for a second time he's going to try and find the run he does now eventually manage to find the German and Mukoku can strike and Mukoku can level it here on the half an hour mark to draw us back one all here at Goodison Park right in front of the home fans well Edison is disappointed to be beaten at the far post but it was a wonderful strike yet again from the absolutely rampant German this season Mukoku when he's in that sort of space and in this sort of form he does not miss from there brilliant strike brilliant way to level the game up here it's one all well, it's end-to-end -end stuff here at Goodison Park both teams really putting on a clinic of quality here as Rodrigo with a fabulous touch to get away from Hato Brantwaite came across Kevin De Bruyne though manages to pick it up into Haaland who strikes from distance gets the strike all wrong and in the end it's easy for Jordan Pickford to just watch it go sailing past his post Haaland tried the extraordinary, but got it all wrong. And in the end, it was easy for Jordan Pickford. Mark A to storm out of defence here. Really nicely done from the Englishman. O'Reilly brings it into midfield and tries to find Bakayoko. Got the pass all wrong. And that has been a bit of a symptom of our game so far today. Several lacklustre passes. And Manchester City looking to capitalise. But Onana yet again absolutely fabulous he has been in this entire career mode and he's in the right place at the right time I thought Bakayoko was going to be able to release the ball lost it yet again though in a dangerous position and now Nunez 
is, manages to go past Nana into Haaland. Pickford just about manages to get there in front of him. My word, that was some huge, brave goalkeeping right on the stroke of half time. So here we go then, 45 minutes up, two evenly matched teams, nothing to separate them, one all here. And we've got another 45 minutes to try and see if we can get an absolutely huge three points on the board. Going to be Mark A now once again to bring it out of defence. He's had a fabulous game so far, but he's just run into a little bit of trouble and it's left us a little bit exposed. But yet again, Anana is the man who comes across to make the challenge. Huge stuff from the Belgian. And now O'Reilly can try and bring this one forward. Tried to find Rodri. But yet again, Manchester City's defensive midfielder in the right place at the right time. Those two players absolutely huge for their respective clubs as Manchester City now try and bring this one out of midfield. Haaland with a lovely little death turn back into that man, Rodri. Looking for a pass. Finds a wonderful ball. A defence spitting ball into Rodrigo. He tries to find Haaland. Grealish has it. Rodrigo has it yet again. Manchester City looking for an opening. They found an opening. And Jordan Pickford, though, manages to find his hand to the ball to beat it away for a Manchester City corner. What a save. And it's going to be a corner that, of course, that man, Kevin De Bruyne, is going to take. And he's going to take it short into Rodrigo. He's got the skills to go past Hato, who hasn't had the best game so far. Tries to play it into Jota. Jota doesn't do enough. Rodri has it, though. And this time, the Spaniard does do enough. And he gets Manchester City back in the lead here at Goodison Park. Well, it's just so frustrating. Again, too easy for Manchester City. And it has to be said, of the two teams, they have been the better. And when the pressure is on, we just seem to wilt at the most difficult moments. Manchester City 2, Everton 1. Well, Arna has it now into Ian Matson, And Matson tried to play the ball down the line. But Manchester City, the press is absolutely relentless. And now they sense blood. They have their tails up and they can see. They can try and see if they can put the nail in the coffin here in the final half an hour of this game. Kevin De Bruyne, though, can't get past the main man, Anana, who just about manages to win the ball back. And now Mill Smith Rowe can hopefully be the man to bring it forward. Tries to play it into the channel to Brobby, who's come on as a substitute. Tries to get there, Eden Nunes. Good defending, though. Rodrigo into Erling Haaland, end-to-end -end stuff here as this game really starts to open up in the final 15 minutes. Rodrigo trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Ian Matson on as a substitute. It's played back, though, into Benjamin Pavard, the Frenchman. Lovely ball into Kevin De Bruyne, a twisting, turning. Manages to find his way into the penalty area. Manages to go past, and he ends up... Oh, my word, it was beaten away by Jordan Pickford. Manchester City so close to adding a third there, but we just about get away with one. Back at Yoko, into the centre once again, loses it in a dangerous position. It's been the story of the game for us. We just haven't seemed to find the right passes in the right moments in this game. Balde to bring it forward. Chased down by Mill Smith Rowe. Doesn't do enough. Into Rodrigue. Mark Gay though is just about there. Manages to find the ball into Yankuto. He will now try and bring this one out. Can I try and find a ball into Bakayoko? But instead I manage to find Matt O'Reilly who plays it back down the line into Yankuto. Now into Bakayoko. Bakayoko to try and play it across. The Norman though manages to get there in the end. Brilliant defending from the Frenchman. And yet again Manchester City just the better of the two teams in the most high pressure moments as Mark A comes across and puts a challenge in and in the end gives away a foul well we are deep into stoppage time here Manchester City have the ball exactly where they would want it headed away by Mark A only out as far as Ruben Diaz Jordan Pickford with a big save well surely Manchester City just have to play keep ball here they have gone short and that is exactly what they're going to do Rodrigo manages to get past Matt O'Reilly into the box Finds Jeremy Doku on as a substitute. Twists away from several challenges into Erling Haaland, into Matt O'Reilly. We cannot seem to clear our lines here. Eventually, Ankuto does, but the referee calls time. Well, it was a big game at home and a huge win for Manchester City. Pep Guardiola is delighted, as are the Manchester City players. Jordan Pickford can't believe it. Full-time hero finishes Everton 1, Manchester City 2. Well, it's a big opportunity missed, and it now means that Manchester City have taken control of this Premier League title race, and they now sit seven points clear of us on top spot. It's a really hard one for this man, Anana, to take. He's a leader of men, and of course, he is now my captain. He has been absolutely sensational this season in particular, but across the entire career mode. But the same perhaps cannot be said for his Belgian counterpart, Yo. Johan Bakayoko. Yes, he's got that something special. Yes, he is my highest rated player. But in front of goal so far this season, he has not made it count at the most high pressure moments. And because of that, and with the board expectations being so high this season, the pressure on my shoulders is really starting to mount. And with us standing in the Champions League on an absolute knife edge, and with just one point separating us and Bayern Leverkusen in the fight for the knockout stages, it is of course going to be the German giants whom we're going to be facing off against in our very final Champions League group stage game. The 
fans have flocked in their attendance as they look to try and see if they can win on their team to qualify for the knockout rounds. But with our fate in our own hands, we've just got to make sure that we do a professional job here today. However, with such a big game, I have decided to make two big calls to my usual starting 11. Matson does come in at left back in place of Hato, who drops to the bench, who's just been a little bit out of form so far in the last few months of this season. And the other big call is that this man, Jan Kuto, starts on the right-hand side of my midfield with, of course, the out-of-sorts Bakayoko unfortunately dropping to the bench. Well, on a cold winter's night here in Germany, the snow is falling heavily on the ground and we've just got to make sure that our hopes of a Champions League knockout stage does not fall too. Here we go then, 90 minutes to make sure we get the job done here in Germany. It's going to be Depay who's going to be the man for Bayern Leverkusen to take the free kick here inside the opening 10 minutes of this game. Memphis Depay, the man who cut us to the sword in the first game when we played against them, but this time Branthwaite comes across to block off the challenge of Boniface. Lovely stuff there, and now Anana can bring this one forward into the channel and finds Mukoku. Mukoku is going to try and see if he can find a ball all the way over to a Millsmith row. It's a good ball over, and the Englishman manages to get there ahead of the defender, cuts it back, and it is that man, Jan Kuto, on in his first game to start in the Champions League, who comes on and does the damage inside the opening 13 minutes. My word, what a way to stake your claim in the starting 11. Well, it all came from Millsmith row, winning the ball on his chest, and this for a ball straight onto the edge of the six-yard box, and the Brazilian live wire just managed to get there, round the corner, cut in front of his man, and applied a wonderful finish with his left foot. I'm delighted, 1-0. Well, it's the perfect way to start this game, and it's the perfect way to try and calm the nerves, not just for the players, but also for the travelling Evertonians as well. Long may it continue, and long may we try and see if we can get a second to double our tally. Tuchemeni for Leverkusen into Memphis Depay, who I'm sure will be looking to try and see if he can dish more damage, just like he did in the first time we played them at the very beginning of this group stage. But Gruden now has it. Well challenged, though, by Matt O'Reilly, proving yet again to have that Champions League experience at the most appropriate times. As Jan Kuto now to bring it forward, and that is a lovely ball into the path of Mukoku to drive into the box. Cuts it back once again for Damsgaard who just puts it wide. Well, it's both times on the counter-attack where we have seemed the most dangerous. Damsgaard just didn't connect with it and he just sent it wide. The goalkeeper outstretched, couldn't get on the end of it and Damsgaard is left frustrated as he's unable to give us a 2-0 lead. Danto with a lovely ball into the path of Frimpong who just manages to cut past Ian Matson into Memphis Depay. Well saved though in the end by Branthwaite and Anana manages just to wriggle past the challenge of one of the defenders. Emil Smith row now into Ian Matson to try and burst down this left-hand side. Has he got the beating of Danto for pace? No, he doesn't, so instead cuts it back for a Millsmith row. Lovely touch around the corner into Damsgaard, into O'Reilly. O'Reilly shapes up to try and look to strike on his left, his favoured left. Doesn't manage to uh, find the right movement, though. But eventually, Anana will win the ball back in midfield, and we still have an opportunity to continue this attack. Mukoku wriggling around, manages to get away from the defenders. Lovely ball into O'Reilly, who bursts into the box. Can he find the cutback? He does manage to find the cutback, and Yankuto, yet again, he gets his second. He gets our second, and he is proving to be an absolutely insane inspired decision to put into the starting lineup here today. Well, once again, it's just that pace and that awareness and that just that extra bit of guile to manage to sneak ahead of the defenders. And this time, toe poke it in with his left foot past the goalkeeper. It was still a really, really good finish right into the bottom left-hand corner. And he's doubled our lead here in Germany. It is 2-0 Everton. Well, here we go in the start of the second half. We've got a 2-0 cushion here. And at the moment, as it stands, we will be going through to the knockout phases of the Champions League. Jan Kuto looking to try and add his third as he tries to storm past the uh, Bayern Leverkusen midfield, but eventually he just gets crowded out. But we've just got to make sure here in this second half we do a professional job and we do not let things slip as Emil Smith Rowe coming to our aid yet again, tracking back. What a signing that man has been from Arsenal. Quetta tries to find space out wide to Frimpong on the right hand side. Danzo again to Frimpong. Leverkusen just searching for holes and gaps in my defence here, but at the moment are unable to find any. But this time it's Yupamakano to try and bring it forward. But Damsgaard with a wonderful challenge wins it back and of course gives it to that man, Jan Kuto, who of course has the pace to burst down this right hand side. He drives to the edge of the penalty area, tries to feed it back across. But of course, the man, Yupamakano, equally as fast, manages to win the ball back. But eventually, Onana wins it back in midfield, plays it short, lovely ball into a Millsmith throw, who checks onto his right. Lovely stuff. That is absolutely beautiful. Emil Smith Rowe, who has been an inspired signing since joining us in the summer, has applied the third goal of the game, and surely that is enough 
to seal our path through to the knockout stages. It was a beautiful little drop of the shoulder to get past the defender, but he still had a lot of work to do. And on the edge of the box, just took his shot with a plomb. Fabulous finish and a fabulous way to give us a 3-0 lead. Ronaldo though for Leverkusen. Surely they are just searching for some pride here. Some form of consolation to send the German fans home with some sort of respectable score here. Boniface tries to play it into the box. It's all oh my word. It's bouncing around like a pinball inside the six-yard box. But eventually Pickford just manages to claim the ball and release Emil Smith-Rowe down this left-hand side. I'm going to try and play it central into Brian Brobby, who's on as a substitute. He plays it into the left-back, Matson, who cuts it back into the path of Emil Smith Rowe checks onto his right goes to strike this time it's blocked off it will be a corner of course it will be a corner that that man Emil Smith Rowe will take he's had a fabulous game so far as he plays it into the substitute Hato headed away though by Jan Kuto another man who has been absolutely brilliant all game Emil Smith Rowe plays it to the back post looking for the big man Jared Branthwaite doesn't manage to find him Anana though does manage to find O'Reilly who tries to bring this one onto his left to, to make space sorry to play a ball into the box but in the end is absolutely hacked down by Danzo and the referee doesn't even give a foul it's only a throw and in the end we give it away Hato though manages to rescue the ball back and continues right onto the edge of the box into Anana the Belgian has it tries to play a ball into the path of Jota doesn't manage to find him though and in the end they manage to bring it away Dan Kuto looks for the overlap of Terraciano does manage to find him cuts it back into Alex Scott Alex Scott wriggling away though manages to keep all the ball really nicely done from the Englishman back to Jan Kuto again he goes unselfishly to Anana just trying to see if we can find some sort of space to fashion an opportunity O'Reilly will try and take it on and instead blazes it wide but it does not matter because the Bayern Leverkusen players have their heads in their hands the Everton players celebrate wildly they know what this victory means it means that we sail through to the knockout stages and we have absolutely this man Jan Kuto to thank his two early goals and a third one from Emil Smith Rowe is enough to give us a comfortable 3-0 victory here in Germany. We haven't managed to top the group but we do breathe a sigh of relief as in second place we qualify for the round of 16 where we have been drawn against another German club. It is RB Leipzig, a team whom we knocked out last season. Will they be seeking their revenge here in the round of 16? However, all the plaudits must go to this man Jan Kuto. A brace from him as we manage to grab the win. The Brazilian has struggled to settle into Everton colours so far this season, only scoring twice prior to this game in the Premier League but two huge goals in the Champions League courtesy of his first start in the competition and I'm hoping that can kickstart his career here at Everton Football Club. As for us though with the fight still ongoing in the Premier League and the game still coming thick and fast throughout the winter period it is all still to play for here in this career mode as we seek to finally win our first piece of silverware this season but that is that for the end of today's episode thank you everyone for watching I hope you have enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you again next time.